Well, hey everyone, welcome to McLean Church. We're so glad that you've joined us. My name is Ben Stefano, and I'm one of those site pastors here. And you know what? We've got a lot going on, so let's check it out. Teens, we have a fun event planned for you. Join us at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, July 28th, right here at our Edinburgh location for Water Wars. You can play slip and slide kickball, compete in a slow-mo water challenge, and more. That's Wednesday, July 28th, 7 o'clock at our Edinburgh campus. And now set a reminder in your phones for August 18th when we will host a teen campfire worship night here in Edinburgh as well. So July 28th, August 18th, something for all teens hosted here in Edinburgh, both beginning at seven o'clock. You know, there are online and in-person events happening all month long. Whether you like outdoor midweek worship or you wanna join with a group of ladies for exercise and discussion, or if you prefer to hang out with the guys or you love playing volleyball, we have something for you. Check out our website, our mobile app, and social media for more details on all of the opportunities you have to gather together for worship, friendship, and fun. Now, will you pray with me just before we send it over to our worship team? Father, we are so thankful for this day and this opportunity to worship you. I pray, God, that through song, through giving, and through the word of God, our hearts would be challenged today, our spirit would be encouraged, and God, we would have new hope for the rest of today and into tomorrow. Holy Spirit, would you come and be our teacher? It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, hello, McLeaners. I'm excited as always to worship with you wherever you might be. I always try to trust God on the peaks and in the valleys of life. But sometimes that's a lot easier said than done, isn't it? Well, musical worship is one way for me to get there to get to that place where I can connect with God even when I'm feeling low. So wherever you are right now, whether on a peak or in a valley or somewhere in between, let's lift up our voices together and sing to our Heavenly Father. Through every trial, through every circumstance, still your mercy covers me. every battle I don't have to understand still I lift my voice and sing yes yeah, sing today tomorrow and forever I will live for you today tomorrow To me, you hold my future in your hands. So, in the world shaking, the ground beneath my feet, you're the solid rock on which I stand. Yes, yeah, stand today, tomorrow, and forever. offers us the gift of his presence for eternity. What is the end goal of Jesus? The restoration of all things 
and to have us near him forever. He saves. He rescues us from our messy selves and places us in a safe space away from the darkness of our sin and pain. In our world and culture, it can be so easy to get lost in all of the distractions around us. So let's remember that Jesus is the one place where hope can truly and wholly be found. In Christ alone, my hope is found. My light, my strength, my song, this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter.
calls me home Here in the power of Christ I'll stand Here in the power of Christ We stand You know, we're just under a month away from the annual Erie Gives campaign. Erie Gives 2021 will take place on Tuesday, August 10th. And during this day of online giving, the Erie Community Foundation will match a percentage of your donation to McLean Church. You know, with all of the challenges we faced in 2020, you still gave nearly $20,000 in one day towards our vision of impacting a region for Jesus Christ. We hope that you'll consider supporting that vision again this year. More details are available on our website or at eriegives.org. Well, we are so thankful for your continued generous support of McLean Church. Your act of worship through giving is making a real difference in our region. Remember, we've made it easy for you to give online through our website or through our mobile app. Just click the Give button at the bottom of the app and we'll take it from there. You can also give through the mail to our Edinburgh location at 12511 Edinburgh Road. That's 12511 Edinburgh Road, Edinburgh, Pennsylvania, 16412. Once again, thank you for all you're doing to support McLean Church. Well, as we continue a little break from our study in Leviticus, today we'll look at a story that Mark records in his gospel. It is about Jesus in a boat with the disciples and a storm suddenly arises. And with three words, Jesus totally calms the seas. This story is in three of the four gospels, though in this particular version from Mark, there are additional details that Matthew and Luke do not provide. And those details from Mark are an important part of providing even more depth and power to what is already there. It's kind of like this. Um, my wife and I have been together for 36 years. We've done a lot of things and seen a lot of things together, the same things. But sometimes we see them differently. I have noticed that when we are together with friends or family and and I begin to tell a story that she'll sometimes provide additional information to the story while I am telling it. And, and sometimes she will wait until I finish my story and she will say to the people there, now let me tell you what really happened. She proceeds to tell the same exact story with the same basic premise, but she will add details that I left out. And these details in turn will provide more depth perspective, and sometimes humor. She is a very good storyteller because the details and information that she provides makes her story thorough. This is what Mark does with this story. When we compare his account to the other two, there are some specific details found in his story 
that provide additional information beyond the other renditions. And because of that, it's more thorough and has power beyond the power that is already there. And you should know this, it's important. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all end their story consistently with the same question. Who is this? Who is this man? Who is this Jesus? That is the question I'd like to answer today. And I believe that the extra details in Mark's story will help us to more clearly answer that. And as a result, we, the reader, benefit greatly in our understanding of who Jesus is and what he can mean for our lives. So let's read our story as found in Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? You still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. The first phrase unique to Mark's story is this, leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was. Here's the backstory to this story, also unique to the gospel of Mark. Jesus was teaching all day long. He, he is at the lake, the Sea of Galilee. Uh, this is a good size lake, 64 miles long and eight miles wide. And Jesus has spent the whole day there. He's been with many people, has put in a full day, teaching, preaching, healing, listening. And Mark says that they took him along just as he was. What that means is that Jesus did not go home to shower or make a sandwich or change clothes. In fact, if he had worn a three-piece suit to work and preach and teach and heal all day, that's exactly how he would have gotten in that boat that day to go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Now, Mark, including this detail, gives us a little glimpse into the work ethic of Jesus as a man. The work ethic of this man who was on this earth and had a mission and work to do. Well, certainly there were times when Jesus rested. He needed to. Scriptures tell us that he traveled to the mountain to pray and rest. But this was not one of those times. There seemed to be an urgency for him to get to the other side because he had work to do there. In Proverbs 14, 23, it says, Work brings profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. And the profit of the work of Jesus Christ was calling followers, making disciples, and ultimately watching hearts be transformed. This was the work of Jesus. And this type of constantly moving, work-oriented depiction of Jesus is exactly in line with Mark's entire gospel. His gospel is very focused on the works and the work of Jesus. So what does this detail mean for us? Well, sometimes we just need to view life with more urgency. You know, we're so busy at times waiting, waiting for God to show us if we should do something that we end up doing nothing at all. We pray and wait and pray some more and wait some more and move on to something else and then start the cycle again. If God is moving you to do something, and you are waiting because maybe it seems like it's inconvenient or perhaps too much work, ask, would Jesus do it? What did Jesus do? Would, would Jesus have gone there? Would he have said that? I wonder how often 
we are depriving ourselves of God's best because we're too busy analyzing and waiting and talking about things and not springing into action through faith and trust. I recently spoke with someone uh, who's starting to follow Jesus. And he said to me, I don't want to just sit around reading my Bible all the time. I want to do something. As we continued to speak, it really came out that his goal and desire is to make the most of whatever time he has left and to do it for Jesus. He feels an urgency to make up for lost time. Jesus seemed to have this urgency and his mission was tiring. And on this particular day, Jesus' busy schedule and constant draining of himself caused him to fall into a deep sleep. You know, the shortest verse in the Bible is in the Gospel of John, Jesus wept. Well, in this story, Jesus slept. And he slept wherever he could find some space to do so. Mark provides another detail, and, and that is of Jesus sleeping in the stern, the back of the boat where the steering takes place. There's a little seat there for the driver, and Jesus was laying his head on that seat like a makeshift pillow. In Luke 9:58, Jesus said, Foxes have dens to live in, and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. The Son of Man is that component of Jesus who eats and sleeps and uses the bathroom and laughs and plays practical jokes on his friends, and yet he is also the Son of God, who, according to Psalm 121, never sleeps or slumbers. It's mind-boggling. It, do you ever have trouble figuring this out? How could Jesus be God and man, both at the same time? And, and for me, this story makes it a little clearer. While he is asleep, the storm comes upon them. The Son of Man could sleep because he was exhausted as a man would be. But the Spirit of God, the Son of God in him, knew there was nothing to fear because of God's power and constant presence. Apply this to your own life. If you begin to follow Jesus, he becomes a part of you, a part of your life. Now, you're still human, but the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Paul tells us this in 1 Corinthians 3.16. Do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? And Psalm 91 says that he who dwells in the shelter of our God will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, that he is your Lord and Savior, the Spirit of God is in you and will not leave you. This is why we can believe Jesus when he says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Why? Because he is in you. He does not come and go when it is convenient or when we are behaving poorly, he leaves and he comes back when we are better. He is always there. Think about this story. Jesus got on the boat before the storm. He was there during the storm. He calms the storm and he stays there beyond the storm. It is the same thing with us and Jesus. When we decide to follow him, he gets in our boat and never leaves, ever. This is what he did and what he does, and we must have faith in this kind of Jesus. If you are following him, he never leaves. He is fixed, and we must begin to believe this always. And when we do, our faith replaces our fear, our doubt, and our weaknesses. 
Jesus said that our faith needs to be like that of a child, like a child who experiences comfort by just knowing their parent is near. I remember that as a kid, being in bed in the dark in my room and comforted by hearing my parents in the rooms below me or beside me. I slept soundly. If Jesus Christ is in your boat, God is in your house, you have nothing to fear. Whatever storm you are in the middle of today, if you have God, he's got you, and he is not letting go. What are you afraid of today? What are you facing? Jesus is there. He is not leaving. Jesus is with you. Now, fear was the disciples' issue at this moment. This phrase the disciples speak when they wake, Jesus comes from their fear. Jesus, wake up. Do you want us to drown? This is the way it is phrased as a question. It's unique to Mark's story as well. It almost sounds like they're trying to give Jesus a guilt trip. Have you ever said these things to God? God, where are you? Are you even there? Do you even care? How often do we say things like this, not only to God, but to people around us? And we're speaking out of fear and anger. And they come out so quickly. And then we regret them. We convert our fear into accusation so as not to admit our own weakness or inability. If the disciples could have only remembered in the moment who Jesus was and what they had seen him do already, then maybe they would not have jumped so quickly into that fear and doubt. Oh, how often do you and I have great faith only until challenges and trials come up and then fear seems to overpower our faith. In those moments, for me at least, I get really weak. I give up and I feel like a spiritual failure. When we rely on ourselves for strength and courage, fear and failure can easily set in. But when we remember to tap into the Holy Spirit, that helper whom Jesus left for us, then we have strength beyond ourselves. Barb and I traveled to Vermont a couple of weeks ago to visit our kids. While we were there, we rode e-bikes with our daughter, Sarah, uh, electric powered bicycles. Oh, what a great time that is. We rode up a mountain and then we rode back down. And when you ride these electric bikes, um, they, you still have to pedal, you still have to do some work, you still have to steer, of course. But here's the best part. When it gets too hard, the motor kicks in, it propels you and gives you help. It feels like someone is running behind the bike and pushing it while you pedal. That is a picture of the Holy Spirit, God in you. As a follower of Christ, I can only get this far. If I want to get to here, my humanness only takes me to here. But when I have faith and trust God and let the Holy Spirit have power, he takes me where he wants me to go. He takes me to places beyond what I can go. This is where faith overcomes fear, addiction, past abuse, hurts, hangups, Fill in the blank. It is God with you, in you, and working through you. Just like Jesus in this story. To be able to then say to those things in your life, quiet, be still. And to experience the power of God over them. You know, in the other gospels, we are only told that Jesus calms the storm. In Mark's story, we get this direct quote, quiet, be still. We read the three simple but powerful words that he actually spoke, the Son of Man waking up and the Son of God speaking a command. And instantly, 
the waters are calm. Let Jesus speak these words into your life today. Let him speak them into the area where you need to hear it the most. It's another clear picture of Jesus being God. And when he needs to be God and the voice of God, it is there. This is very interesting. Think about Moses for a second. God spoke to Moses and through Moses. And Moses led the Israelites out of slavery. And they were being pursued by Pharaoh and his army. The sea was a problem for Moses as well in front of him. They needed to get past it. And so Moses says to God, basically, well, what are we to do? God, in that case, tells Moses, well, use your staff to clear a path in the water. Moses is not God, but God works through Moses and does the speaking through him and uses his staff as an instrument of power. With Jesus, Jesus does not ask God what to do. He does not use an instrument through which God can transmit his power. Jesus is the instrument. Jesus is the power because he is God. The waves and the wind listen to him immediately. Jesus is God, God in a man suit, exhausted one second and commanding the seas in the next and never saying, what am I to do? What he did then, he can do now in your life and in mine. One final observation about this story, and it's a, a pretty important one. Back at the beginning of Mark's story, he provides the detail of there being other boats with him. People followed Jesus on land. Some of them had boats. They followed him on the sea as well. Other boats were there. Perhaps some were followers. Maybe others were curiosity seekers, innocent bystanders, people who were fishing, or maybe just passing through. There may have been some who had no clue that Jesus was even there. But they were all going to be impacted by Jesus's words. They just didn't know it. In boating, there is a term that you will often hear called a wake. You have seen it if you're a boater. The sign that says slow, no wake. As you leave a dock or approach an area, you are supposed to go slowly so that you don't disrupt the boats around you. A wake is that trail of disturbed water that a boat can make and it can affect all the boats around it. But by moving slowly when other boats are nearby, you keep the wake down and there is little danger. The storm created a huge wake, a serious disturbance upon all of the boats in the area. When Jesus calmed the seas, not only did he save his passengers, but he saved all the people in the boats around him. This is the wake of the Son of God. Not one of those fear-producing chaos and calamity, but of quiet and peace that has a far-reaching impact. When Jesus is in your boat, you are affected by his presence. But the people around you, they are impacted by his presence as well. It was over 20 years ago now that Flight 93 was taken down by terrorists in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. There's a list available of all of the passengers and crew members with very short descriptions of their lives and the roles that they played on that day. On that flight were many who were followers of Christ. Donald and Jean Peterson, a middle-aged couple from New Jersey, were two of those people on that flight. They were headed to Yosemite for vacation, having switched flights at the last moment from a later, more crowded flight. 
Don Peterson's personal Bible was found in the wreckage with a list of men for whom he had been praying. He and his wife were faithful followers of Christ and their friends and family shared the impact that the Petersons' lives had upon the people around them. Whether at work, at their church, or just in their everyday lives and living, they remembered the quiet ways in which they affected the lives of the people. In a quote from their pastor on display at the Flight 93 Memorial, he said this, I wasn't on that plane, but I believe I know what happened. At the end, I'm sure they were praying and ministering with the others, encouraging them to be right with the Lord. That's what their lives were all about. Jesus was in their boat. And in that moment, when the wake of a disaster could not be quieted, the wake that Jesus Christ created in their lives was impacting the people around them in the final moments of their lives and certainly well beyond. Who is this man, Jesus? He is the sure and calming voice of the storms in our lives. When we invite him into our boat, our failures and struggles in life do not define us, but he defines us by rescuing us and providing peace in our lives through faith in him. Is Jesus in your boat today? Won't you pray with me? Jesus, we believe in you, need you and invite you to be a part of every part of our lives. Granted, it may not always be smooth sailing because this life has some rough seas, but when you are in the boat, we can be assured that through faith you will lead us through. The bush that has God in it may burn, but not be consumed. The ship that has Christ in it may be tossed, but will never sink. Thank you for revealing yourself to us and for never leaving or forsaking us. Amen. good you are good when there's nothing good in me you are love you are love on display for all to see you are light you are light when the darkness closes in you are hope you are hope you have covered all my sin you are peace you are peace when my fear is crippling you are true you are true even in my wandering you are joy you are joy you're the reason that i sing you are life you are life in you death has lost its sting and oh i'm running to your arms I'm running to your arms The riches of your love Will always be enough Nothing compares to your embrace Light of the world forever reign You are more, you are more Than my words will ever say You are love you are Lord, all creation will proclaim You are here, you are here In your presence I made whole You are God, you are God Of all else I'm letting go And oh, I'm running to your arms I'm running to your arms The riches of your life
nothing compares to your embrace Light up the world forever My heart will sing no other name Jesus, Jesus My heart will sing sing no other name Jesus Jesus my heart will sing no other name Jesus Jesus and oh I'm running to of your love will always be enough nothing compares to your embrace light up the world forever rain I'm running to your arms I'm running to your arms the riches of your love will always be enough nothing compares to What a great challenge by Pastor Mike today to remind us of Jesus' presence in our life, no matter what we're going through. So, as we go into this next week, go out into the world in peace, have courage, hold on to what is good, honor all men, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, and share the gospel. Love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. In the name of Christ, who together with the Father and the Holy Spirit reigns now and forever. Amen. Mm -hmm.